Just tell me, how did you become involved with this film? Uh, they, they started turning up at pill gigs, um, mm -hmm. a couple of these Norwegian fellas, and uh, they were very interested in uh, putting a film out, and they said it was using punk as a backdrop, but wasn't really about punk. And it all sounded very confusing to us, and then we didn't kind of take it too serious. But they kept on turning up at gigs, and then and phone calls ensued. and kind of convinced me really that these people really, really were genuine in, in what they were doing here. This is the world and it's made up of tiny little pieces of excrement. Because that's me talking to me. Crap. You as a... As, as a, a kid, kid. And, and as an Crap's adult. And, and, and I'd been in like a life-threatening uh, situation like that when I was seven. I was in a coma mm -hmm. from meningitis. So I understood that, 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 that situation that child was in at that precise moment. Look at it. Look at all of it. It's fucking bollocks. Well, I love it. It's hilarious. So how was that scene written? Was it, did you... Was it, I'm guessing it was a back and forth to come yeah, up with. With a great sense of hilarity that some dialogue was thrown my way, going, roughly, this is what you'll be saying. We know you won't say any of it. Chaos is crap. Personality is crap. Everything is crap. But... but... <laughs> <laughs> and that's exactly what happened. And, and it ended up, uh, so we flew to Norway, it's midwinter, it couldn't be as, you can't imagine anything more colder. Um, I've got two pages of dialogue they've put together. And of course I'm trying to learn it, but I'd, not a word of it sunk in. And I just went out on the balcony, froze to death for two minutes and, and spoke to this young man. I was quite literally freezing to death at that point. So that look is, you know, that's near death experience. <laughs> Punk, so you look good. So you spill good. How's that a reflection of what you saw growing up uh, in that time period in, uh, in England? Well, without the ever loving anarchist parents. <laughs> But very, very similar. There were bits of the mother there. Oh, I lived with me, of course, of my mum. And, and, and moments with the dad. I mean, it's, um, you know, the whole nudist camp thing. There's something similar my dad used to do, which is why I stopped going on holiday with my family at about 13 or 14. Because my dad would just love to just take his pants off and expose himself on a beach full of happy, you know, <laughs> happy families. Uh, and that was his idea of fun. Your mom actually uh, also liked a lot of the same music that you did growing up, like Captain Beefheart and, uh, yeah. and Alice Cooper. What yeah. was that like having having parents who? <laughs> well, it could drive you a bit crazy because you're trying to be, you know, like your own self, and and there's your mum almost competing with you. <laughs> but I, I became very close to my mum when I knew she was dying of cancer, and and would take her to uh, to concerts. You know, to see really mad things, and I, and I and I was proud to take out my mum to a gig. Mm -hmm. I loved it. This is my date, and and that's how life is. And of course, it's what young people are going through these days as good as much as anything. Is it a blessing way back then? On top of teen angst, we also had punk rock. Do you know that the teenage years are terrible years? Terrible years, but at the same time, you, you will always look back on them as like, oh, fine moments. <laughs> but that's how life can be, and that's how this film is. That, that kind of, you wouldn't think that possible in real life, but yet that is how real life is.